And we're on to bids. Uh, we have four bids tonight. Uh, the, the biggest one, of course, is the Rowell High School edition. So Kelly and... First bid is the addition at uh, Rolla High School. We have Mark here, obviously, and also uh, Nick Barrett. Mr. Barrett is uh, representing CSE and uh, the uh, low bid. And uh, we did meet with uh, uh, him and his uh, colleagues uh, on Monday uh, to do a questionnaire with Mark. And a uh, uh, representative from McClure was here as well, and a representative from um, Dennis Spurgeon from MAGI, who's a subcontractor, uh, took part in that meeting as well. Um, the, uh, just a reminder for the people that are watching, uh, this is the site plan. Um, the new addition will go, it's uh, approximately 27,000 square feet. It will go to the west side of the building where the annex has been removed and uh, will tie to the building. The floor plan includes... Uh, uh, basically 11 new classrooms you can see uh, in the in the tan is the new addition the blue represents uh, remodeled uh, classroom space 9 and 10 are where the current high school office is dr. Pritchett's uh, office in and, and the secretaries that work there and then uh, the three classrooms uh, toward the top right of the picture those are currently two rooms, uh, which will be turned into three. Um, and I believe we're moving computer labs into two of those across the hall. So uh, they're a little bit bigger, larger rooms than the rooms that are east of those that aren't shown on this drawing, but we're just, uh, we'll take the smaller rooms, turn them into regular classrooms, and the computer labs take up a little more space. So, um, and then the office, uh, the new main office will be uh, shown here in the lower uh, right corner and a new main entrance uh, which will face south so uh, mark if you'd like to touch yeah. on anything and I'll, do you want me to go through whatever you yeah. can cover okay um the uh we did take bids on uh, this is a handout basically what you've got in your packet i believe mm -hmm. is essentially um the inter the interview information, which basically it's a list of questions that we we like to. I don't think they have that. Okay. But basically, um, what we've done is we interviewed the contractor and asked just questions as if um, have you included every the you feel comfortable with your bid. Give them a little bit of time to go back through their bid and um, and confirm that they've had time to look through it. Um, are they comfortable with the schedule? Have they, and just identify things that came up during bidding. Uh, the schedule is always a critical one, obviously on a building like this, mm -hmm. um, where it's critical to stay on a schedule and maintain schedule. We've got plenty of time to get it finished. We just have to hit those critical dates. Um, mm -hmm. So those are some things we talk about. We talked about the subcontractors. I wanna go through the subcontractors and, and see if they've worked with them, if they're comfortable with them. Um, any that we have not worked with that we can ask them about um, and just the all all the other things if they've included the um, the e-verify and um, uh, district background checks and things of that nature just a, a vetting process that we've done over the past years um, but to kind of go through um, another um, the the letter basically that was submitted is uh, we had um, 12 general contractors requested uh, plans. Nine actually, uh, we received nine bids, which we had great coverage mm -hmm. on this on this package. Probably one of the the most coverage we've had on a project in, in a long time. Mm -hmm. Really good coverage. Um, we had uh, 34 sets of plans out. Plus, we have discs that would go out as well. So, uh, two plan rooms. So as far as coverage and people getting numbers, it, it was there. This really felt comfortable with that. The uh, bids came in at a, a low of 
$5,731,000 to a high of $7,037,294. Um, CSE um, is low, and it's our recommendation with the administration to award the base bid plus performance bond uh, to uh, CSE for $5,731,000. Um, if you wanted to look at the, the bid tabulation on that sheet right there. They do um, have it. What's that? We, we have do have that. We have that. You can kind of see the range. And, you know, some of the, we had a real close range together, and then some of the other ones were, if I would have read the, Ben Hur won the first. I might have had a heart attack for the other one. So, um, what was our estimate again? Five point eight million was our uh, was our estimate. So, um, we're, we're 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 that made us feel good too that we were and that one we I think Kelly would attest that I was a little nervous. He was a little nervous. I, I always He's get a little nervous. nervous in the morning. I, I gotta always tell get you. nervous, um, but felt very good. Um, and uh, the the. Um, Jumping forward, the, the demolition has taken place on the, uh, so that's down. Um, the same contractor that took that down is a subcontractor on um, CSC's list, so they'll just kind of pick up and um, start off. So we would, um, with the ward, we would move ahead right away, get a pre-construction meeting going with all the subcontractors. Um, anything else? Uh, Nick, we're using, I think we looked at it, uh, subcontractors within a 90 mile radius was 15 of the 20, maybe, or, or so. Yeah. Something like that. About 75%, uh, which I would call that local. Local, con, local sub, yeah. that's great. Uh, so that's a, that's a good thing for our economy. Yeah, it's uh, a good thing to have a local low bidder. It, it may not be 20, <laughs> but, but about 75%. Uh, and obviously, uh, CSEs from Rolla, so um, they have a vested interest to uh, uh, for the kids of this community to to do it right. Well, we know where they live too, so, <laughs> right. so we're, they, we're excited about that. Do they have experience with this size of a project. Uh, they actually they did Wyman uh, for us yep. uh, the addition in 2004, and uh, uh, so that's uh, also S and T. They they provided us with uh, with. I think, what projects have you worked on S&T? For the uh, geothermal project, okay. we decided that because the park had asked for information about working at schools. Right. So, uh, working around students. Mm -hmm. so. Working around students. That, that's, that's always a concern on a high school campus. Um, and that was another thing that we, was another thing that we talked uh, a lot about. Um, never taken for granted that you're on a high school campus, you're gonna have kids coming in and out in cars and vehicles and, and just with the security and things of that nature, we, you know, we'll have to develop a team effort to make sure that all the, um, all the uh, safety checks are, are uh, employed so that we can keep it on a, a safe project. Working with the fire department, obviously, uh, because this project will take, uh, you know, we're, we're estimating 12 to 13 months and uh, uh, so we'll be in school and uh, have a thousand kids on that campus uh, during the year and, and need to obviously have areas to evacuate and all those things while we do that, similar to the, the science wing project. That was dead center of the high school. So um, uh, that was part of the questionnaire and discussion this week and we'll, we'll as, as we move forward, um, really iron out plans. I know Wayne has talked to me about uh, just, you know, traffic flow and those type things during the school year. And, and uh, uh, the intent, if we can get uh, all the insurance in place and documentation in place, contracts in place, um, our hope is that we can have them on site uh, the day after school's out and, and break ground. They're one of those deadlines that Mark's talking about. Uh, we have about a three week window before summer school starts. And the high school administration, uh, we gave them the option to go to the junior high again and explain some of the uh, things that they may face because if they're gonna stay at the high school and um, they were comfortable with staying at the high school, uh, summer school will take place, I think, over in the, what I, the old, older part of the building that was remodeled, the science wing, that, that area. And so uh, the office, we've already 
Larry Moreland and his crew have taken a room downstairs, uh, room 108, if you're familiar with it. Booster Club meets there. Uh, that'll be the new uh, office for Josh and Amy, and Jim will be in Amy's office for the next 14 months. So uh, they plan on moving that office as soon as school's out as well, so they'll relocate uh, as before summer school. Uh, but Mr. Moreland's, uh, we put in temporary walls in 108, and and uh, got some office space set up there. Uh, and what about the classrooms, the ones that we're remodeling as part of the addition? What, right. What, where will those classes go? Or well, there's all, currently, currently there's two classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of those is used for meeting space. Uh, it various, it's, it's varied. It's not a assigned classroom, okay. uh, 205. Uh, the other is the business classroom, and Jim's already identified a room. Uh, to move those to so um, now CSE may choose not to disturb that room at first you know those rooms at first but they're gonna have uh, during our project planning meetings they'll know that those are available for them to get started with the renovation in those classrooms as well um, but uh, and and there's obviously tied the fresh air units have to go in there um, we have to get ventilation to those rooms because they're losing their windows mm -hmm. so uh, that's a that's an item that's addressed in the plan as well. So, how much parking will be compromised during school year? No. Really, I don't think on our blueprints very little. Well, we were going to ask for 300 spaces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, we may have to let yeah we have to call the church. Um, uh, uh, Can I change my recommendation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, some of that, you know, obviously. The architect has marked off what's a recommended area for for safety and really uh, probably the circle drive area will be gone yeah. mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. fenced in yeah. uh, so some staging area there in in my mind and we haven't discussed this yet because the meeting last last week was we probably good to, with the bid we probably ought to approve the bid okay. before we get to yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we'll get into that in the planning stages and okay. uh, really not a whole lot Greg I, I don't think other than what's available in the circle drive any other, nothing any nothing other, that oh, can't be handled just, by the gravel parking the gravel lot, lot, right, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Go ahead. So the construction area, we have a lot of things there that are after hours. So I know that when people are there, we can keep people out. It's a chain, chain link fence, the, the entire area, okay. uh, locked okay. when they leave. Uh, Not yellow tape and some... Uh, classroom chairs like we had over no right? no no that was a little <laughs> bit different design so, uh, yeah. this this one uh, this one's a little more uh, long term any other questions from the board about the bidding no. congratulations Nick. any uh, any uh, thing else entertain a motion to accept the bid from CSE uh, happy to have a local contractor win the bid I'll make the motion I'll Thank second you much. It. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Barrick. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the turmoil. Uh, <laughs> soccer field trenching. All right. Uh, just. Oh, we had pictures. Hey. Oh, hey, there's we didn't that. see those. We're good. Did you pass them? Yes, sir. I got a video of it. No, we're good. Thank you. We were out of town. Thanks, Mark. Is that Thank the beginning you. of the Thanks, presentation guys. right there? Thanks. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Good. All right. Here, Here we, we go. go. There we go. Right there. Thank you. <laughs> what? Hey. Those come later. Those come later. That's buildings and grounds. We're not there yet. This is going to be a tough decision. She's trying to get me out of out of rhythm. Uh, soccer field trenching. We do have. Uh, uh, we received one bid for this. Uh, it is about 350 foot of trenching to put in a drain system along the west side right in front of the stands all the way to the southwest corner of the current soccer field. Um, it's been a drainage issue since 2007 um, and it's seemed to have gotten worse where uh, we did have some French drain in that area. It did not extend all the way to the southwest corner. It stopped about where the seating stopped, and um, uh, so the uh, the bid is to uh, uh, put in new drainage along that and tie it into the city storm system at the northwest corner of the field. 
and so it will uh, be able to uh, be playable in that corner much better. Uh, Any this, questions? This price is, uh, Larry's very comfortable with this price even though there's only one bid. Um, How come we don't get other bids or something like that? Too small. Probably. They had the opportunity, uh, it may be sometimes uh, they may have other things scheduled, not want to get, get to it uh, in the time frame that we're looking at. Uh, we do plan on doing this now. Uh, girls soccer uh, can be on the turf, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not going to interfere with that, and uh, uh, we can get it taken care of. So they'll they'll start as as soon as uh, they're given the go ahead. Any other questions from the board on the soccer field? Good. If not, entertain I'll a motion. We accept the bid from Mad Guy Incorporated. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Freezer controllers. Okay. Uh, freezer control. This is a, a, a unit, uh, actually seven units that uh, we currently do not control our freezer units. For example, we can have a freezer go down mm -hmm. uh, and we're not aware of it. Would be uh, nice and some of ours set outdoors. For example, there's one at the junior high that sets outdoors. Uh, we lost about a thousand dollars worth of product in that freezer. Uh, motor went down over the weekend, and uh, so we've we've investigated some uh, the ability to uh, monitor those. Um, Larry and Bob did a lot of research on uh, uh, what product would give us the best information, and so uh, these will mount onto the freezer units. Uh, they have a backup, so if the power goes down. Uh, there's a backup battery that feeds them, uh, so, so they're not down, and uh, uh, they're web-based. So uh, Bob, with his iPad, can he'll get warnings, text warnings, email warnings if something goes down. It also doesn't just monitor whether it's on or off. It monitors temperature inside the freezing unit. It also uh, monitors uh, the entire system, uh, whether the coils, you know, if it's overheating, those type things. Uh, the way Bob explained it to me is that it gives us the ability to be proactive uh, when we, when he notices things, uh, we can maybe replace a part and not have a major breakdown. Uh, we can uh, solve problems before they become real problems. So uh, that's what this product, so the recommendation would be to reward it, the bid to uh, Crescent uh, I would make the motion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I thought he had a question. I would make the motion. We accept the bid from Crescent Parts. Have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Be opposed? And handheld digital analog radios. As you know, we've been, uh, we put in an infrastructure last year to give us uh, better coverage across the entire school district for our transportation department. We've been working toward uh, we run on an analog system currently um, with all of our radios. We have about 65 radios and buses, and, and um, then we have about 50 to 55 portable radios across the district. The high school obviously is the largest uh, building, largest staff, and has the most activities and has, again, the most radios in that building, about 25. Um, when you start taking custodians, uh, administrators, ticket takers, just supervision at a varsity football game, there's probably 15 people carrying radios on a, on a given night on a Friday night. Um, so uh, <clears throat> we uh, tested three different models, the Hytera Vertex and Motorola um, that are listed on here. Everybody bid those uh, those radios so what we did is we purchased about 18 radios took them took them across the district let every administrative team test them in their buildings um, obviously the the two largest buildings have some spots that challenge any kind of coverage doesn't matter what kind of handheld radio you have uh, it's a little challenging to go from the third floor uh, for example, the third floor of the high school and talk to someone that's standing in the AD office. That's kind of a challenge. 
Uh, actually, it's sometimes easier to talk to somebody that's standing at the baseball field on, from the third floor <laughs> because there's less walls, less steel. It travels better. Um, so with the testing, every handheld worked uh, fairly well. Um, every model had, had this kind of the same similar uh, areas that it w couldn't talk, you know, those type of things. Um, so uh, I asked the administrators. They, they had no idea what the prices were on any of these. Um, I didn't want them to know. I just wanted to know which radios. Uh, so I asked for feedback on all those. Um, the Vertex radio, uh, as I said, functionality was pretty equal. Um, the high school, uh, we've got one challenge that we'll cross uh, later, but uh, it's minor right now. Uh, and uh, the uh, Motorola was the most preferred. This model is about half of the size of the other two. Uh, it's very similar to what you're carrying as a cell phone. That size radio uh, has the same ability, and it's, but it is not the lowest bid. The lowest, it's about $3 more uh, per unit. Um, but uh, our recommendation is that we purchase Motorola uh, uh, because they all seem to function and three dollars a unit uh, for the ability when you're packing them around um, it's just uh, a better situation for not only the administrative team but custodians people that are carrying them all the time yep. um, we feel like that's that's the appropriate so that would be my recommendation uh, our plan uh, I would recommend that we buy uh, 35 of these we have a grant that uh, Amy Herman wrote uh, for a school safety grant mm -hmm. that was awarded to us. I think I mentioned that to the board earlier when we were awarded the bid or awarded the grant. It was a grant for $9,900. And so 35 radios will be just over that. Uh, so I'm, I'm recommending that we buy 35, uh, which with the 18 that we've already purchased as a district, um, now, some of those, obviously, the other two models, but we'll put those in areas that people aren't carrying them. Mm -hmm. um, a stationary location, for example, a nurse's office, those kind of things where they don't have to pack them around. Um, so still very usable, and as I said, that'll give us close to that 50. Mm -hmm. um, the principals have been told that if they want additional radios um, than what we're able to supply this year, that they could look at at purchasing some extras out of their own supply budget. Um, and once I got the okay on this, uh, if, if you give me that, I'll talk to Motorola about honoring that price uh, if we're gonna buy more than 35, um, if, if the administrators tell me they need a few more in a building. Um, all these radios are digital and analog, and so our goal is over the next couple of years is to get all the bus radios to digital uh, and then we have the ability to switch them all. So they'll run on analog currently, but they'll be programmed and it's literally hitting a button to go to digital, um, which will even give us better, clearer coverage once we're able to do that. Uh, but we can't do it until we're all ready to go. So uh, this is just one more step towards that goal. Any questions? questions? To give you an idea, uh, I was so surprised. Um, I was happily surprised. Uh, Motorola, the retail price uh, on that radio is four hundred and twenty-five dollars wow. from this company, from RCC. So okay, I'll make the motion that. we uh, yes. get these uh, radios radios from RCC Inc. per the bid price. I'll, I'll, sec I'll second that. Second. Okay. Any other comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. You got your radios.